Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about a controversial topic, but it's one of the things that comes up, and it's something that people don't always realize is my stance, uh, because I don't talk about nutrition a whole lot. So, in my case, I am actually not a believer in flexible dieting, or if it fits your macros or any of that. Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, I don't want to take nutrition advice from a fat guy. You know, they'll always pull that card without realizing I'm, I'm not fat by any athletic or medical standard and that I've lost 100 pounds of body fat. I have been a fat guy. And the issue we run into with that is that, well, what would be your counter argument? That I would be leaner if I ate ice cream? I mean, that's, that's almost what the people use as a counter argument. Well, I'm not going to listen to you on this. Because you would be so much more ripped if you just ate ice cream and Pop-Tarts and a bunch of fried chicken and garbage. That's basically what they're telling me. And you know what? I'm going to disagree. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, I don't think that I personally would be leaner if I ate ice cream every day. How's that? I, I don't think that it would make me leaner at all if I ate ice cream or Pop-Tarts every single day instead of brown rice. How's that for a fair statement? Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Now, they'll say, well, what happens if, if you binge? It'll cause you to binge on that stuff. Well, if you don't eat it, you can't binge on it. If you don't have it available, how do you binge on it? You can't. You can't binge on ice cream and Pop-Tarts and pizza if you don't have it. And that's the point. Let's come over and talk about that. Uh, and I fall into a, a minority opinion regarding the current fitness community as it comes from the bodybuilding physique type world, which is not my cup of tea. It's just that I'm intermingled with it. Because you see most of those promoting flexible dieting and if it fits your macros. But the reality is there is a whole other school of thought that actually makes up a larger school of thought of people who have restrictive diets and fad diets. That's actually the bigger category. But here's, here's where I think the middle ground needs to lay. I happen to know quite a few people who do work with this, who do work with people with eating disorders, who have uh, psychiatric backgrounds and things like that, and I have friends who don't believe in moderation, right? And in this particular community, online community, which is a circle I frequent to some extent, even though I choose to stay detached from it, um, I, I don't think that moderation works for a pretty sizable percentage of the population. Now, the flexible dieters will make this statement that the majority of people can handle flexible dieting. The majority of people can handle moderation and do better with it. It's a minority that are on the other extreme. Okay, I hold the opposite view. I hold the view that the majority of people, and particularly the overwhelming majority of people who've ever been morbidly obese, it's usually indicative of some binge eating issues, can't handle moderation, and that it's a minority of people who handle it well. I am of the opinion that only really naturally lean people, with some exceptions, because again, people say, well, I know this exception, or I'm an exception. So let's come back over. There are exceptions, okay? There are exceptions, and you might be one of them. And if you are, hey, great, more power to you. That, barring those exceptions, that's usually the people who do well on the flexible dieting. People who've never really been fat, people who don't have an enormous appetite, right? Someone who's never eaten 8,000 or 10,000 calories of raw cookie dough at 2 a.m., right? Now, all the fat people out there are laughing because they know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Because I've been there. I have been 100 pounds over fat. And I can tell you that when you're in those positions and you have a binge eating issue, yeah, you can't have raw cookie dough. All right, you can't have the value pack of pizza in the freezer because you'll cook all of it and eat all of it in one, one evening. You'll, you'll eat it at midnight. You'll throw every pizza you have in the oven and cook it and eat that crap. You will eat the whole gallon of ice cream. There's no moderation. Right? I am of the opinion that it's the, the lean people. A lot of them who promote the flexible dieting who've never been fat. And, you know, and, and that's the thing that bothers me is that people say, well, this person did used to be fat. I'm like, where? Let's see it. 
they'll be at a healthy body fat in the picture. Like they're slightly carrying a little bit of extra fat. All right, they're bodybuilder fat. These are not people who have ever been fat. Right? Sub 40 inch waist, talking about being fat. Okay, that you don't count. You don't get an opinion. Right? I mean, come on. Absurdity. Well, he used to, he was up to 20% body fat. Uh, that's at the top end of the healthy range, you jackass. Like, seriously? So, that's, but that's who you see. And, and if you take the formerly obese person who's had a binge eating issue, and, and me, and it's a pretty sizable chunk of my audience. And let's, let's be realistic here. Who needs more help out here with fat loss? The guy who can get to 12% body fat without tracking anything, right? The guy who gets to 12 or 13% body fat just by upping his cardio, who just wants to get a he doesn't need help. He needs help for vanity purposes, not athletic purposes, not health purposes, purely vanity purposes. That's a, that's a smaller minority of people. We have one hell of a obesity epidemic. There's a lot more people struggling who need to lose 50 pounds or 80 pounds than there are people who need to lose the last 5 pounds of body fat to see their diamond sharp abdominals. Okay? Come on. And here's what I'm going to say. Right? Most fat people have a binge eating issue. I have a binge eating issue. The idiots on the flexible dieting group will say, well, you just need to get therapy for it and spend, I don't know, $50,000 on therapy in five years of your life so that you can have a better relationship with food. Which, by the way, I spent 30 grand on therapy before. Um... It doesn't help. So, back over to the point. So that I can eat ice cream every day. Like, that's, you, you, you think that's worth it? It's like, seriously? So let me ask the question. Nutritionally and from a health perspective, what possible benefits are there to eating ice cream every day? Like, like what are the benefits of eating 350 calories of Pop-Tarts or getting 50% of your calories from pancakes every Saturday and Sunday. Like, what is the actual physical health benefits of this? To where it becomes so important. All right, let, me, let me make this clear. It is possible for a human being to be happy and have a complete life. And be perfectly healthy without ever eating ice cream. Okay, it, it is actually possible. It is actually possible for a person to be healthy and have a fulfilling, happy life without eating large amounts of heavily refined foods and trying to work them into their calories. It's actually totally possible. It's this weird idea in that community that all these highly refined foods, some of which aren't even food, they're not foods, they're just a big pile of chemical mush that people have created that happens to have calories, oftentimes. That's, it, it's not even really and truly food half the time. Half the stuff that they're saying, well, you can just work into your diet. And I get it. I'm talking about special occasions, treats, that's fine. But is it something that you need every day that you need to have in your house? And do you think that that's promoting long-term health for a population that has binge eating issues, has an issue with hyperpalatable, calorically dense foods, that has an obesity epidemic? That should we be telling people the majority, oh yeah, you can just work this into your calories and you'll be fine. Or should we be telling them, hey, you should probably just eat whole foods. Track your calories, of course. You need to eat whole foods. You need to eat a good, balanced, healthy diet. Irrespective of which one you choose. Just understand that whatever healthy diet you choose, it is largely because you're controlling your caloric intake. Your calories in and calories out is why you lose fat on it. But... A lot of these methods, some of these diets are actually really good for controlling that. And a lot of them cut entire food groups out. And we are abstaining from them. And people say, oh, well, you shouldn't be cutting food groups. It's not healthy. Really, what? again, back over the point. What possible health benefits are you getting by eating ice cream that you don't get from Whole Foods? 
All right, what is nutritionally found in pop tarts or pancakes or maple syrup jumped on it or upon your big pile of ice cream with chocolate syrup on it? Like what is found in that that you need that makes it so much healthier than chicken, broccoli, and brown rice? Or, you know, whatever type of diet the person is following that's uh, mostly whole foods. Like well, what does it have in it that makes it so much healthier? I, I don't see anything there. Right? And I personally choose not to have those foods around. I personally choose not to eat those foods. And people say, well, why aren't you ripped? Uh, I would be 300 pounds. You just think I'm not ripped now. Let me try to moderate my food and watch what happens. I bulk real fast. Real fast. Usually I gain about a pound a day. For me personally, I'm healthier and happier and fitter when I just live on whole foods, irrespective of what diet approach I take. And I would suggest there's a pretty sizable segment of the population that would do just as well doing the same thing. Strength training, eating whole foods. Is that the only way? No. But for a whole hell of a lot of people, I think it would work better than what they're doing. Just my opinion. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.